She's like, here you go, you got, you got detention, so good job. Hey guys, it's Alyssa. I'm not really a troublemaker. I never was as a kid, and I still not as an adult. And if I do get in trouble, I usually understand why I get in trouble, and I understand what caused me to get in trouble in the first place. But there were some instances in my past where I got in trouble for something, and there was no reason for me to get in trouble. Or the reason for getting in trouble was stupid or just didn't really make sense to me in a way where it's like, why? Why'd you do this? What's the point? This video is gonna be talking about two times in my life that really stick out where I got in trouble and it really wasn't the best decision to reprimand me for getting in trouble. So the first story comes from when I was in sixth grade. In middle school, you would go to homeroom before you went to your first class. That's where they usually just took attendance before you actually start your day of classes and learning and education. You got to school off the bus or if someone drove you, you go to your locker, you get your stuff, and then you go to this classroom and whoever is your teacher there just takes attendance. You sit in there for like 10 minutes, they read you like the morning announcements, what's going on for the day. And then after that, you go off to class as normal, like your regular periods. But one particular day in sixth grade, there was someone on my bus who had a broken leg. And this person at the time asked me to help them carry their stuff to the locker because they had to walk on crutches. And being the nice person that I was, and still is, I decided to say, yeah, sure, I will help you out. So I walked with them to their locker, I put their stuff in their locker, and then they asked me to help them carry stuff to class, and so I did. I realized after I dropped them off at their class, like, Parent. I realized that homeroom was actually going to be over very soon and that if I left this classroom to go to my homeroom classroom I probably wouldn't make it there in time anyway and I didn't want to be late to my next class by dealing with all of this I don't know I guess I just thought like I shouldn't go there's no point I didn't go to homeroom that day and when the bell rang and everybody was going to their next class or their first class I just went to my first class because I didn't go to homeroom that morning they didn't mark me down as being present for the day. So I went to my first period class, second period class, all the way up to lunch. So my homeroom teacher said that I skipped, so she marked it down that I skipped homeroom for that day. So during lunch, while you're in the cafeteria eating, there was this woman who was in the, the front of the cafeteria who had a microphone, ugh, and then she would read off people's names and tell them to come up to the front. Now, I never knew at this point in sixth grade why they did that. But then I learned when you are called up to the front, then you have to get a slip that it tells you that you have to stay after school for detention or have like some sort of lunch detention for the rest of the week, I don't know. This woman, this particular day, calls out my name and I was very confused because again, I didn't know what this was. So I walk up there, she tells me to sign something and then she gives me a slip. She's like, here you go, you got, you got detention, so Good job. And I was like, are you, wait, what? I'm so confused. I think it said on the slip maybe that I got detention because I skipped homeroom. And I was like, that is so, ugh. Like I did a good deed and now I'm getting the consequence from a good deed. So I was cr crying. I wanted to cry. I think I ran to the girl's bathroom and cried. And I remembered my mom was picking me up that day. So I was crying. We didn't really have cell phones at the time, so like, or real cell phones that we can use in school, so I can't call her. I could go to the office and probably call her, but I think I just waited until the day ended and she came to pick me up that I ran to her car with the slip and I was crying because I'm a good kid. I would never get attention for anything unless it was a good reason. And helping out someone who was on crutches get to class is not a good reason to get detention if you, if you understand the circumstances of what people do to get detention. So I told my mom what happened and why I skipped homeroom, and she agreed that this was not right. So my mom took me by the hand and we both went back into the school to the main office. So we tried to talk to one of the secretaries about this issue and one of the vice principals was there at the time and he was listening on in. And all of a sudden the vice principal's like, yeah, this isn't right. Uh, I'm going to help you out here. So he says, I will get rid of your detention because I can do that. I have the power. My mom and I were so grateful and we thanked him and that was it. The next day, I go on, I go to homeroom and I think I got some side eye from my homeroom teacher. And then I go to lunch and I get called up again in the middle of lunch to the front. So I walk up there, I sign, I get another slip and it says that I'm getting detention because I skipped detention from the day before. But I was so confused because the vice principal said that he can, he can get rid of it. 
I think I went to the office and I called my mom and then she came. I don't remember what happened from there. But then we talked to the vice principal again that we first talked to and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe it wasn't processed properly. But anyway, I didn't have to go to detention, but I got in trouble for something that was very stupid. And I didn't under I understood why I got detention because I skipped homeroom. But you know what? Sometimes you got to fight the man. Sometimes you got to show off who you really are and fight that. But don't don't take this advice from me. Don't like every time you get detention, if you do get detention, don't fight it unless you have a reason like me. <laughs> the second story is actually from my freshman year in college. So again, this is like uh, the first year in a new place because sixth grade was when I first started middle school and now freshman year of college is my first year of college. But at college during finals week, they have this time where it's called 24 hour quiet hours. So basically, you should have your doors closed. You should try to be quiet most of the day during the night because people are probably studying for their finals. It's not like you can't talk. You just can't be loud. So this was at the end of the year at finals and it was getting kind of warm out, kind of sticky and humid and hot in the rooms. And I remember my residence hall was like, hey, since it's getting kind of hot, why don't you leave your windows open? Maybe leave your door open a little bit to get the air going through the through the, the room so you cool down. Yeah. So this happened the night that the 24 hour quiet hours were put into effect. So it was the Friday before finals week even started, but it starts now because people start studying Friday night to the weekend. But you know, Friday nights you just kind of either go out or you just chill in your room with your friends. And that's what my friends decided to do. To be quiet and not make too much noise, we decided to play Monopoly on the floor together as friends, having a good time doing social things. So our door was open because we wanted to get some of that cool air going through like the residence hall suggested we should do. And we had like, I think four people in the room playing Monopoly. And then two of my other friends came walking in when they saw our door was open and they started talking to us, casual conversation. It wasn't really like we're all screaming and yelling and partying. It was just like, they're talking to us. They asked us to maybe go get some food. We were like playing Monopoly. We were explaining like we were in the middle of the game. All of a sudden an RA walks by. And in case you don't know what an RA is, it's someone who monitors the floors. You kind of report to them for stuff. But in this case anyway, so this, this RA particularly was doing rounds. So they were just checking to make sure everything's okay. People weren't being loud because it's 24 hour quiet hours. But she sees our door open. She knocks on the door and says, hey guys, I can hear you down the hallway. Your door is open, which shouldn't be open. And it's 24 hour quiet hours. So you shouldn't be making any noise at all. I'm going to have to write you all up. What? So getting a write up means that she takes your name and I think you get your ID number and she puts it into the system saying that you kind of got in trouble. So we were all very confused and we were like, um, why are you writing us up? We really weren't making any noise. And she said, yeah, but it's 24 hour quiet hours. My job is to write someone up. We don't give you a warning at all because it is 24 hour quiet hours and you should know that you shouldn't be making any noise. And as you can see, you're making noise. I'm gonna have to write you all up. And we understood why. I mean, we were making noise. The door was open, even though they told us that we can. We were like, okay, sure, whatever. We didn't argue, we didn't fight. We were just like, yeah, you're doing your job. And we gave her ID codes and everything. I got in trouble because I was playing Monopoly too loud. So yeah, that's what happened. And I'm still like, shook to this day about it. So those are my two stories about how I'm not really a troublemaker, but sometimes trouble actually comes my way. You're awesome, I'm awesome, and thank you for watching this video. And if you want, you can hit subscribe to find out when I post videos whenever they come out. Also, if you wanna follow me on all my social media, the links are in the description box below. Give this video a like if you liked it. And also, why don't you comment a story about how you got in trouble for something that you shouldn't have gotten in trouble for. Like, did you do a good deed and then get in trouble? Was it something really stupid? I don't know. Leave it in the comments, let's all share. And I will see you guys around, okay? Bye. Woo! So this is like completely random, but the other day I found out that Jack Septicai's name isn't actually Jack, it's Sean. And I was like, what? I don't even watch Jack Septicai. I like occasionally start watching him if his video seems interesting. And so I tweeted saying, wait, I didn't know. And then I tagged him. Jack Septicai's name isn't Jack. And he liked it. And I was like, I don't even follow you, bro. Why are you liking my tweet about this?